I'm kind of waiting for it to go off. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Maybe it is about her. Oh my god. Hello, welcome to this video. My name's Dan, aka Lucent. I'm a singer, songwriter, music producer person. And today I'm going to be reacting to Lana Del Rey's brand new shadow drop song, A and W. So let's go. Um, okay, so I'm sorry it's taken me so long to get to doing this reaction. Honestly, I've had a mental week. Um, I'm now no longer single. Yay. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so obviously Valentine's Day was quite busy. And then we ended up seeing Kylie Rae Jepsen. Anyway, so it's been like a crazy week. And there was loads of stuff going on at work as well. So anyway, I haven't listened to it. I haven't been spoiled it. Honestly, your appetite for my reaction to this song is uh, lovely. <laughs> like, people commenting like, by the way, Alana's got a new song. When are you going to react to it? When are you going to react to it? I had people messaging me on Instagram. I had people tagging me on Instagram. It was like a whole thing. If you want to follow me on Instagram, links in the description. That <laughs> people were commenting on all sorts of, every single post. I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. Because apparently it's amazing. Like, some people are saying it's the highlight of her career. So... It's quite exciting, really, isn't it? So let's, like, not waste any time. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. If you're not new to the channel and you want to support me further, you can do it on Patreon. You can watch this video and most of my videos completely unedited with no cuts during the song or anything. Link's in the description. Cool. Okay, let's do it. It's seven minutes long. We've got an epic. I honestly, like, Venice Bitch is one of my favourite songs of hers, so I'm down for a long song. And remember to stick around for the lyric analysis afterwards. Okay. Let's go. Plucked guitar situation. Mm. Nice. Oh, I'm liking those chords. Quite cinematic chords. Production is a little bit kind of folklorian in the way that it's like plucked. Now you can hear the fingers on the string. Raspy, dry. Okay. Oh, subtle kick drum movement. I love her voice, it's almost like quite low quality. This is gorgeous. I love the chords. Oh. oh wow. This is an, the experience of an American whore. I love the production on it, it's like super raspy and also kind of distorted. I love the pace of it. It's, it's quite a subtle pace though, isn't it? Like, is it a third person narrative or is it like comparing her own experience to it? Look at the length of it and the shape of my body. Singer can still be looking like a side piece at 33. Only, only the association of somebody else. I love the sound. I'm kind of waiting for it to go off, actually. I wonder if it will. Oh, the production on this is so cool. I love this kind of weird electronic, distorted, super grungy atmosphere. Wow. So cool and dark. It's quite sinister. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. This is so exciting. Oh my god. Oh my god, this is so cool. You only love me when you want to get high. Oh my god, it's gone somewhere else. I told her, you're f***ing up big time. Oh, that's so cool. Oh my god, it's like converging like Lana's interest in the kind of hip hop genre with her like style that she's developed in the last few albums in such an interesting way. I don't care, baby, I already lost my mind. I don't care, baby, I've already lost my mind. Ah, oh, this is... This is giving me Beyonce vibes in a weird way. Do you know what I mean? Like those those vocal flourishes, yeah. This is so cool. Oh my god, what the hell? That was amazing. 
Ah, amazing. Oh my God. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with that when, where that went. I like was so like loving the opening kind of like subtleties. So it was almost like a song of two halves, right? The opening side of it, I was loving the production of it. I loved how kind of lo-fi and like, it sounded like she was singing through like a really old amp, you know, like you kind of could, could only half make out the lyrics and all of the guitars and stuff. You could really hear the string on it. And it was like super, super like lo-fi kind of grunge kind of, and it had a really subtle beat to it. And I was like, that's quite an interesting place. And I thought like for the whole time, it felt like it was building tension, right? That first section, I was like, where's it going to go off? And I was expecting it to kind of go off like, bah, like a big kind of moment, but it totally undercut our expectations in a way that was so satisfying and took it into more of that kind of hip hop mode that she really, really likes to, to play with, you know? But in a way that she's never done before. Like the sounds that were used, the way that she's used like layered vocal flourishes in a way that does remind me of Renaissance, you know, as like builds up like such a unique, interesting atmosphere that seems to re for me like really merge the styles of like her like chemtrails over the country club, club kind of like smooth, long, like meandering vibes with that kind of hip hop style. For me, like this one brings it together in a new way that's just so satisfying and really like splits the difference, you know? Um, it's really exciting to listen to. If this is like the direction of where the album's gonna go, then I'm so excited for that. Cause like the Tunnel Under Ocean Boulevard, I loved it, but it was more, it was kind of like, you could start to get the, the, the sounds of this kind of distorted kind of grungy place. But I couldn't necessarily see how the sound had developed much past the last few albums. Does that make sense? Like NFR, uh, Chemtrails and Blue Bannisters all kind of felt like they were in a similar world, you know, like like sonically. And like the Tunnel Under Ocean Boulevard felt like it was a step forward, but a smaller step. Whereas this feels like it's the big step we need for a big new Lana era. And I'm so excited that like not only production wise, but also like compositionally, she's really taking some big swings. Quite a key sound from NFR forward was the sound of the strings and the Tunnel Under Ocean Boulevard still had that sound, whereas this has abandoned that. It's all distorted guitars. And then like, oh, I loved all the weird little samples and stuff. There was so much to listen to, like little background things that were almost like hinting of like, a darkness that was to come. And then when it actually all kind of came through with those with those close harmony vocals, like right in your ear, it was like so cool and so satisfying. Like it was felt like it was teasing it up until that point, you know? Um, oh, the, it's so exciting to hear from an artist who is on what, like, what is this album nine? You kind of like maybe expect like artists as they get older to kind of like lose track of that kind of verve that they had in their, their original few albums. But Lana is not. She's proving to like really be evolving and really be leaning into wherever the music is taking her. And it's quite really, really exciting to hear. Everybody said it, this was like a career highlight song. I understand why. It is exciting. And I'm so excited for the album. Let's look at the lyrics because a lot of it was difficult to make out, if I'm honest. Okay, I haven't done a cartwheel since I was nine. I haven't seen my mother in a long, long time. I mean, look at me. Look at the length of my hair and my face, the shape of my body. Do you really think I give a damn what I do with the chance of just hearing them talking? I say I live in Rosemead, really. I live at the Ramada. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really, really, really matter. So it seems like she's kind of telling, like, it doesn't seem autobiographical to me. The story that she seems to be telling of somebody who doesn't recognise themselves in the mirror anymore, maybe somebody who's changed themselves. You know, she hasn't seen her mother, she hasn't gone back to her roots, she hasn't connected to her roots in a long time. She hasn't done a cartwheel since she was nine. You know, it's, it's about like being a completely different person from who you were as a child, you know, and not recognising yourself and saying, you know, looking at herself in the mirror and thinking like, obviously I don't give a damn about how I look, you know. Someone's really low, um, and really disconnected what I do with the chance of just hearing them talking. So she's even lying, like the Rosemead Ramada thing is like, she's even lying about where she comes from, you know, go and walk her into my bedroom. Then 
we go fuck on the hotel floor. It's not about having someone to love me anymore. This is the experience of an American whore. Interesting. Walk her into my bedroom. Okay, there's two things. She could be singing from the man's perspective. You know, there's someone who's about to like have sex with, with this prostitute, sorry, sex worker, or it could be like a disassociative thing. I think that might be what she's saying. It's like walk her into the into my bedroom. She's disassociating herself in order to cope with the fact that she is, you know, a sex worker who doesn't want to be. It's clearly in a very, very, very low place. It doesn't feel like themselves anymore. And she's disassociating and singing in the third person. I think that's what it is. Because it's so, like, that is so cool. Like, <laughs> called up one drunk, called up another. Forensic files wasn't on watching teenage diary of a girl wondering what went wrong i'm a princess i'm divisive ask my why 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 i'm like this amy huntress kind of like this i don't know maybe i'm just like this called him up to come over again yeah i know i'm over my head but oh it's not about having someone to love me anymore this is the experience of an american whore so maybe she's not actually literally a prostitute maybe it's just somebody who feels like they're so disassociated that they are like like having sex but not even feeling it and maybe that's the comparison she's drawing oh my god if i told you that i was raped do you really think that anyone would think it would you really think that anyone would think i didn't ask for it i didn't ask for it i won't testify i already fucked up my story this person was raped and maybe that's the reason they feel completely disassociated. It's Maybe it's a traumatic thing. Maybe she feels like a whore because she feels like she was ruined, that she feels like she was dirtied and traumatised by this, this like, abuse, abuse situation. And now whenever she has sex, she completely disassociates herself. Oh, my God. So many other things you can't believe. Did you know I sing? I can still breathe. Looking like a side piece at 33. Maybe it is about her. Oh my god. Shit. Turn down the back beat. Puts the shower on while he holds me. Slips out the back door to talk to me. I'm invisible. Look how he hold me. I'm invisible. I'm invisible. I'm a ghost. Look how he hold me. It's not about having someone to love me anymore. Okay, now this is the experience of an American whore. So it's like... God, yeah. So she's with this new person and she feels like... She's not even, like, there, you know. She feels invisible. She's a ghost. Jimmy, Jimmy, Ch Coco Puff, Jimmy, Jimmy, ride. Jimmy, Jimmy, Coco Puff, Jimmy, get me high. It's like maybe using sex as, like, a temporary balm and almost, like, this kind of, like, horrible dichotomy between having, like, associative trauma around sex but, like, it being the only thing that can, like, you know, almost, like, patch up the wound you know, and keep her going. Jesus. Your mum called, I told her, you're f***ing up big time. So she's, like, blowing up this relationship, whatever's going on as well. Jimmy, if you leave the house, find me in a club. Jimmy, if you switch it up, you should light it up. As if she released this on Valentine's Day, come on. <laughs> Cynical, huh? Jesus Christ. God, that is such a powerful piece of music. And it feels like, I don't know whether she's diving into her personal experience or not, but either way, like, there's such a kind of visceral sense of disassociation that, like, I've never heard, I've never heard in a song before. And the way in which the music kind of represents that disassociation, you know, like, the way that it changes, the way that it feels, like, swampy and, like, distorted and, like, almost, like, loses the plot halfway through. I think, like, that is really, like, she's trying to, like, sonically represent this feeling of, like, looking in the mirror and not knowing who is looking back at you and being with somebody but not being able to escape the trauma of the past and feeling like they're invisible, like they're just on the side, like latching onto the side of this person and not really there. It's like somebody lost in that trauma and not knowing how the hell they can actually get through it. And I just think it's insane how she manages to represent that sonically as well, but in a way that is so exciting and surprising and amazing to listen to. I just, yeah. I know I can understand why you were saying that like, this is like career highlight for Lana. Like, this might be one of her best songs. Like, I'm obsessed. Okay, I'm going to go listen to it 58 times. No, I can't because I've got to film my Carolyn Polachek reaction. Oh, amazing. Wow. As if she completely, like, swipes us with this song on Valentine's Day. And I'm, for the first time in my life, I'm too busy to actually do anything about it. Oh, dear. Th 
thank you for watching this video. Make sure, obviously, to come back for my Lana Del Rey. Did you know there's a Tunnel Under Ocean Boulevard full album reaction when it comes out? And if you want to support me further, make sure to head over to the Patreon, check out my videos unedited, and to request reactions of your own from me. I will see you then. Well, I'll see you before that because I'm sure that you'll be watching all of my videos. <laughs> um, oh, and if you're new, then make sure to check out my old line of videos too. My NFR reaction is like one of my favourite videos I ever did. Um, so yeah, cool. Okay, bye guys. Oh my.